We're going to look at physical science, page 1117, and I want to particularly look at page Q, and um, to help us understand what I have found students struggle with the most on this page, is we're going to go through question 18, but that'll actually help you if you go back then and look at 16, 17, and 19. I think they'll make a little more sense. So um, I'm going to dive in here at number 18, and uh, the problem, well, I guess I should read it here. Let's see, it says, uh, across a valley, you see a forest fire. All right, there's the forest fire. And um, to determine how far away the fire is, you shout across the valley. It takes 0 0.83 seconds. For the echo to return, how far away is the fire? The temperature is 25 degrees. Don't forget to finish the problem. The first answer you get is the total distance the echo traveled. All right. So we're going to, we know that it's 25 degrees, and actually the pace already tells us in some earlier problems that at 25 degrees, that means the velocity is 346. Okay, but uh, if you needed to solve, you could use the you know, 331 plus 0.6 times the temperature and you could get the 346. All right, so we're going to use that. And then, do you remember the magic triangle? I've talked about this in other uh, problems of the paces here, both in science and in some of the math courses. And with the magic triangle, if we want to find the distance, we're going to multiply the velocity times the time. If I want to find the velocity, I cover that up and distance is over time, so we divide. And we could even find the time by covering that up and then we'll divide the distance divided by the velocity. So the magic triangle is a great way of remembering the formula and then being able to solve for any of those three variables. So take a mental image of that, okay? Stare at it, draw it on your paper, hold on to it, write it in the margin of your pace, and then even when you get to your checkup self-test pace test, you can use that magic triangle to help you solve the problem. So what are we asked to find here? We are asked to find the distance, okay? So the echo, it says, travels. So He's yelling and it goes all the way across, hits the other wall, and then it turns around and comes back. So hits the wall, turns around, echoes back, and then he hears it. And it takes 0.83 seconds for his echo to return to him. So what we're gonna do is take the 346, which is the velocity, times the 0 0.83, okay? That will give you a distance, but I'm not gonna finish the problem for you, I'm gonna let you finish it, but here's where most students make their mistake, okay? The distance for an echo is a round trip distance. Got it? So when it asks what is the distance across the canyon, you have to take the distance that you find here and divide by two, because it's the distance across the canyon is half the distance that the echo traveled. Now in the problems, the two problems before that, you're calculating, um, or it gives you the distance across, okay, and then it wants you to find the time that it takes for the echo to return or something like that. So you have to remember then to take the distance and multiply it times two, because the echo has to travel over and back again. All right, and then on problem 19, I just helped a student with this uh, yesterday, and uh, it says, according to the problem on page 24, the pace you can't hear an echo in a room that's 15 meters long. How long must the room be before you can hear the echo? So you need to go back and look at page 24, and there is a problem there, and I'm looking here in my pace, <clears throat> 24. And uh, down here at the bottom, it has a picture of the um, concert hall. And there is a note here that says, right here, the human ear cannot distinguish between the original sound and an echo if the time between the original sound and the echo is less than 0.1 seconds. Okay? 
So we need to then plug that in for the time and use the velocity and find the distance. But again, be careful because that distance is the round trip distance, okay? And so once you find the distance, you have to remember to divide by two. So hopefully those clues will help you. And I didn't give you the answers. You can go back and uh, solve them and finish that section. I'm gonna do one more video about um, the Doppler effect, and uh, then we'll wrap this pace up.